Hey, it's Alyssa back with another art video. In this video, I'll be working on a really cute speed paint of Drake and Hopper, but also more importantly, I'll be talking about my strategy for taking a huge yearly goal for my YouTube channel and breaking it down into smaller bite-sized pieces and how you can apply this to your own big goals for art or anything else. So let's get started. First of all, I really enjoyed working on this commission. It was fun to do an Animal Crossing commission that was of Animal Crossing characters interacting with each other. Um, I really like the commissions where I'm drawing people's pets or people as Animal Crossing villagers. Those are great too, but it's really fun to be asked to do a request of two villagers from the game uh, interacting with each other in a unique and fun way. So I really enjoyed bringing this one to life. But I wanted to take this video to talk about uh, a strategy I have for this channel for the year, give you guys a little behind the scenes peek at what I have planned for the rest of this year without giving too much away because it's subject to change. Um, what it means to stay flexible when planning these big goals and how I'm taking this huge goal for my year of YouTube content and breaking it down into more actionable bite-sized pieces and how you guys can do something similar. If you have a similar goal for maybe you're a YouTube creator or you're a TikTok creator or you have a goal to do something with your portfolio this year or any other big year-long project that you have set out for yourself, you can break it down using a similar kind of method. So I really wanted 2021 minus January, which was my month I set aside for kind of planning things out and testing the waters on TikTok and finishing all the queuing up of posts of Animal Crossing villagers. I kind of took January off more or less. I did post the one video, but it was basically nothing going on on the channel. And I did that for a reason, it's so I could plan out the rest of 2021 because I really want to take YouTube a little more seriously this year than I did last year, be more consistent, and also try out different types of content that I feel like you guys would be into based on what you guys have told me you want to see in the past, and just scheduling it all out ahead of time so I have kind of a path and a direction of what do I need to work on for March's videos, April's videos, and how I can accomplish that without feeling a last minute crunch as I often felt working on some of the videos I posted in the previous year in 2020. So the very first thing I did was find out what day of the week I wanted to post at least one weekly video because that was my plan going into this. I mentioned this in a previous video that I wanted to do at least one video per week that was like a casual video talking like the one you're watching right now, right? With some speed paint footage. And then one video per month at the end of the month would be a bigger one that I'd have to do more research for and editing and scripting and all that stuff, like a mascot snapshot video. And I do have several of those planned, but I also have a couple other different videos I'd like to try out planned for the rest of the year as well. But I knew I wanted to do, uh, you know, there's four Thursdays in a month and the first three would be casual and the last one would be a little bit more in-depth, highly edited and stuff like that. So I took a pages document or word or whatever you like to use or even handwritten if you prefer and I laid out every Thursday of the year. So in this instance, February 4th, February 11th, February 18th, February 25th. Today, this Friday is a special instance because I kind of had this one ready to go as well. So ironically, this video is kind of breaking my Thursday schedule. Uh, but I also set aside that I could do a second video a week on a Friday if, say, there was like, I don't know, a breaking Animal Crossing development or a really cool idea that just struck me like a bolt of lightning that I could fit into that week. And by planning all this content ahead of time and making it ahead of time, it kind of frees up my ability to make last second videos like that and get them out in a timely fashion on Friday. But I wanted to commit to one video every Thursday of the year. So for example, I'll go ahead and spoil the whole month. I've basically told everybody I was going to do anyway on previous posts and whatnot, community posts. So I wrote February 4th, dogs. I knew what that meant because I had the two dog uh, speed paint footage files ready and open to edit. Uh, I would usually give myself a better descriptor than just one word, but in this case I knew what I was talking about. February 5th, time management, Drake Hopper. Again, I knew what that meant. February 11th, Pave speed paint and rant. So that'll be my rant about the January update. It'll probably just be me complaining about the January update for like eight or nine minutes uh, once I get it all edited down. 
On February 18th, I have a video planned about self-doubt when I was working at a piece that was particularly challenging for me and my ideas of how you can either overcome self-doubt or use that negativity and self-doubt as fuel for art. Uh, so that's that'll be out on February 18th. And then February 25th, it just says mascot, and then I wrote the name of the mascot. I'm not going to spoil it yet, because it it may change. I'm going to start doing research this week and see if it's a juicy enough topic. But I had a short list of mascots I was interested in doing videos about. And I did the same thing with every month of the year, writing down a video idea I thought would be good for that month. I have Pokemon stuff lined up. I have Animal Crossing Nintendo mashup stuff lined up for March. And I started writing all these ideas down and figuring out what time of year they'd make sense, either because they related to the season season or because I was trying to space out not doing a whole month of nothing but Pokemon and you know trying to get a nice mix of video ideas that I thought worked well together but also had a good variety. So I have that laid out way ahead of time. But more importantly once I have these uh, yearly goals written out that's the macro that's the big picture that's step one get the whole year kind of simply planned out and then from there I can take a month and break that down into its own chunk. But I basically took the whole month and broke it down into, okay, by January 31st, I need to have the artwork for these done. And I gave myself a nice wiggle room period of like one to two weeks to have all the footage ready and edited and trimmed and ready to go for videos. That was fairly easy for February because quite frankly, most of the art had already been done, except for Pave, that was like the last one I needed to do. And then moving forward for March videos, my goal will be to have all of the March footage uh, drawn and ready to go by the last week of February. This gives me plenty of time to edit the videos in the last week of the month while I'm also doing final touch-up edits and stuff for the mascot video at the end of February. I don't like to set hard and fast deadlines of, okay, you need to do all of this today because I never do. So <laughs> I know myself. I give myself a wiggle room of at least a week period where I can procrastinate a couple things safely. And when I do that, I know, okay, I'm safe if I get it done around this date. And then if I, if I pace it that way, I always get things done by the actual deadline, right? I schedule things to be done a week ahead of time. Uh, this is something I talked about in a previous video with regards to when you're doing commissions. If somebody asks you how long a commission is going to take and you think it's going to take a week, tell them two or three weeks because life always gets in the way, things always happen, and if you deliver on the, the weekly due date that you had set out for yourself, you, to them, you've delivered early and you're a hero. But if life gets in the way, as it tends to do, or commissions pile up or whatever happens, uh, you have a little wiggle room to give it to that client in a time frame that they can expect and, you know, look forward to. You can do that with yourself too. You don't have to do this just with your clients. So I give myself like a week or two wiggle room to get all the artwork done. So know yourself. If you're the type of person that really, really works well under pressure, maybe adding stuff on an hourly or daily basis that needs to be done that minute, that second, maybe that works really well for you. For me, I like to give myself a little bit of wiggle room and it's okay if you do too. And if you're a super procrastinator, give yourself a whole month, you know, work with how you work best. So for this YouTube channel goal, since I've broken the yearly goals down, I have a clear vision of where I'm headed. I know by March 1st, I should have all of this done. And by breaking it down weekly and giving myself wiggle room to do those things, by the time that big due date comes around, I've typically finished ahead of schedule and I'm ready to go. So for example, if you have a different big goal, say you have a goal to work in children's book illustration, which is another goal of mine. Uh, I'll talk about more in uh, two videos from this video. But say you have a goal to get into children's book illustration and you have nothing in your portfolio or nothing that would be good for children's book illustration or not at the level you think it should be. And you need 10, let's say you want 10 really solid pieces. That's a really good start to a portfolio is 10 really strong pieces. You have 11 months left of this year, approximately, to get that done. So you can say, I want to work on one really solid piece every single month. That's totally doable. And you can break that down into, okay, first week of the month, I'll do lots of research and style studies, find things that inspire me, find the kind of color palette I'm looking for, the subject matter I'm looking for. Just take a whole week to do that. That'll only take you a day or two at most, but give yourself a week. And then the next week, just do the study sketches, sketch out the layout you want, the characters you want, 
really plan all that out, knock out a bunch of thumbnails, whatever, get a feel for what the sketch should look like. That again, shouldn't take you more than a day or two, but give yourself a week. And then, you know, the next week do flat colors and then the final week do final colors. Uh, once you've broken it down into those steps, it's much more attainable to say, I'll have a portfolio with 10 really solid pieces by the end of the year versus just telling yourself, okay, writing a big yearly goal saying, my yearly goal is to have 10 really strong portfolio pieces. That could be a little daunting because it takes a long time to make really strong pieces of art that you're happy with for your portfolio. But by breaking that yearly goal down into a monthly goal, down into a weekly goal, and then doing what you can on a day-to-day -day basis, that makes it like almost too easy, right? <laughs> it makes it very achievable and much less stressful in your day-to-day -day life. So again, much like my uh, video about tips for staying comfy as a stay-at-home artist, nothing revolutionary in this video. The idea of breaking a big goal down into a smaller goal is nothing revolutionary, nothing anybody came up with. But it's really working for me so far this year. I really feel good about the schedule I've laid out for myself. I feel good about my ability to consistently stick with it. And as somebody who's completed a really large goal, like drawing 480 Animal Crossing villagers by breaking it down into assembly line steps of sketching flat color, final color, and posting consistently, uh, I think I've learned a thing or two about how to take huge projects like this and break them down into a way that's uh, not so scary to take on. And I think anybody can take on a big project if they just break it down into actionable chunks. So set your eye on the prize, but break down all the steps it's going to take you to get to that big goal that you have set out for yourself. And I think you can make it happen. So let me know in the comments below what your big art goals or any other goals you may have for this year are, and how you think you're going to break that down into actionable chunks that you can set out for yourself to accomplish every single month every single week and every single day. Let me know all your goals in the comments below. And one of my goals for this channel is to increase the number of people in this lovely community here. Everybody here is super nice and friendly and welcoming and loves art and loves Animal Crossing and cute and fun things. So if you've made it this far into the video, you might as well subscribe if you haven't already and give the video a like if you liked it. So I will see you all in the next video. Thank you so much for watching.